electrification has had this great big number that just keeps growing and whatnot. But electrification is the biggest portion of this 2015 plan that you're going to see unfolded, but it's not the only one. And I think if you bear that in mind, as Bob takes you through here, uh, and then we get into a pretty robust, I assume, discussion uh, after Bob's remarks. Thank you. Uh, it's been about a year and a half since we've had this discussion. I think some of you have joined the board since then, so I'm going to do a brief recap. Uh, but basically what we're going to focus on is Phase 2, and as you will see, Phase 2 is the Cal Green 2015 program, and it's the next segment of what we're trying to do. As a brief recap of what we've accomplished, we'll take a quick look at what we did for the infrastructure that got us to where we are today. We'll take a look at what Phase 2 is, which is a different way of building a railroad and providing service, and then we'll give you an idea of what it can become when it grows up. Basically, we're going to start with the first one real quick here and go through. And that's what everybody sees out there. That's Calcan. Very pastoral. Uh, obviously, there's no trains coming down the track, so it's quite quiet. But the reality is, behind that, we've done a lot of work. And over the last part of the program, we added the core track overtake, uh, overtake points to the system. It does have a lot of great crossings, which makes the equation quite interesting. But essentially, what we did is this allowed us to implement the schedule system that we have today as well as our growth. What we also found out is there's a direct correlation between the average run time and passenger ridership. And the only way on this railroad that you can improve the run time is to reduce the number of stops. You can't go faster. You can't make the equipment perform better. So the only way you can reduce run time is you reduce the number of times the train stops. And that's why we've been able to improve our earned revenue per employee is because we've continued to hone the schedule. And what it's resulted in, this is the February count, by the way, the current count, Mike will tell you later, is considerably above this, but this is the actual count. And that's what happens. This is one of my favorite pictures because it shows people waiting for a baby bullet train over here while there's an earlier train going out. They like that service. It's what we call the full model. What we realized is as things were dropping, over here is the dot-com bus. And we were basically going that way, uh, out of existence. As you may recall a board meeting where the question was asked, uh, cut to a balanced budget, and that was quite an interesting conversation we had, because what we found out is we can't. Your sunk costs are out there, so what we actually did, uh, board took a bold action and said, let's increase service levels of the right type, of the revenue generating type. We did that, and we incorporated it, and then we saw the upward trend. Now, this isn't anticipated by any type of normal planning tool. It's called a full model, and that's what this yellow triangle is. And reality is, we're up in there already. We are pulling people to the train who could go drive a car. In the downtown area, they couldn't get on the freeway, so they had to come to us. We could have built for them on the outside of the train. Now we can't. We're in competition with the automobile and with the highway, and there is some capacity out there. There was a 13% loss of, of uh, employment. About 3% of that has returned, so it's not that there's new jobs pushing this. As a matter of fact, there was some consideration about the relationship with gas prices. We kept going up no matter what. Matter of fact, we kept going up even with fare increases. So the elasticity of demand that you normally see in transit was not there. We're basically undervalued. Now we've done some projections, and this line right here is where we are with what we have today. If we stick with what we have today, out there, the only way I can add service is to add trains, which increases my run time, which we know will have an effect on ridership. So we're going to hit a point here very, very soon where we are at the limit of what that system can handle. Now, we've done some modeling things to BTA about if, if we're unconstrained, what would that model look like? Well, that's, in the business world, that's called opportunity cost. That's what we could be doing if we had a system out there that was better than what we had today, just as a fundamental. So we know we're losing money right there. That triangle is lost revenue because the system simply cannot be adapted to what we need. That started the conversation about what type of system we really want. Here's what people said they wanted. I love this one. They want more stops and a reduced run time. Basically what they said is stop at my station and my destination but nowhere else. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? So we took this as a very serious issue. Is there a way to actually reduce run time but add stops back in? There's definitely a right of preference for the new vehicles, and that's pretty obvious. You have to remember, one of the driving elements behind this is not only electrification, but our our, a major portion of our fleet is due for replacement. So the decision we're making today is being driven by a fleet replacement program, 
that we're going to have to do anyway. So you've got a wet retention program and you've got a fleet replacement program. So you're at that moment where you need to make a decision about what we want to be. Greater use of access to stations. And this has a lot of elements attached to it. We heard uh, conversations last week about putting more information up on signage. If you have a proper system out there, a signal system that tells you where trains are, that type of stuff helps access. It helps people know where the next train is. It helps people know information. But it's also parking lots and how we get on and fare equipment and messaging and PA systems. There's a lot of this that we need to do. And then there's the general stationary uh, economic development. We hear a lot of that, especially when we reduce the stops. You hear a lot of communities come in and say, we want to have more people come here because it, it's a driver for business. So let's look at where we are today. We had a choice. When I got here, the, the philosophy was, if you're going to add capacity, add track. Well, that's certainly one way to do it. But it's very intensive, it's very disruptive, and it still keeps you with the same technology. You're only going to get there within a certain uh, performance characteristic. What we decided to do is look at the systems that lay on top of the track to see if we can do some improvement. First thing we have to do is to improve system performance. If we don't get there on, there on time, if we're not we're there where you think we should be, you will go back to your car. So we have to keep system performance up. We have to maintain our, our hallmark, which is our express service end to end in less than 60 minutes. But more importantly, this one. We want to see if there's a solution that allows us to stop more frequently, no less than 30 minutes at every station. And we're talking about a very uh, wide variety there. But in a maximum end-to-end -end run time of 70 minutes, you say, why the world would that make a difference? Because the difference between 70 minutes and 60 minutes, unless you're going from one end of the line to the other end, it doesn't make a difference which train you get on. Today, people wait for a train because of the run time. That crowds those trains and leaves the other trains with a less even distributed load. We can't afford that. What we need to do is get people to step on the next train that's in front of them to go where they're going to go. With a maximum end to end run time of 70 minutes, it's transparent to you. You'll just get on the next train. And all of a sudden, you have tremendous capacity out there, and you can do a lot with that. And then we have to continue to follow the business model. And that is that we have to earn revenue and improve revenue flow all through the design that we come up with. And of course, the optimization system, uh, system access. And this also has to do with something called level boarding, which is yet to be defined as a bit of a question mark. We think we have a solution, but to be honest with you, there's a rule out there that hasn't come through. Here's what the system is going to look like. Electrifying system from San Francisco to San Jose. You may notice that I didn't show transmit terminal. In fact, I didn't show anything. A long time ago, on a previous life, when I was a bird in the early 80s, we had a project called the Integrated Computer System. It was going to solve all of our problems. We waited and waited and waited. We finally changed the name to It's Coming Soon. <laughs> you don't wait on a solution to come to you because they have a way of not showing up. Matter of fact, my, my experience has been they don't show up. So you got to fix yourself. You don't go to somebody else to solve your problems. You solve your own. Man, that's not like I'm going to 